coronavirus cases near 8,000. Worldwide alert. More countries now racing to evacuate their people from Wuhan, China, as cases of the coronavirus soar. 195 Americans now being quarantined at this Air Force base in California as the World Health Organization meets this morning about declaring a global health emergency. And the new warning about those masks. So many people buying them, stores now selling out. Hospitals at risk of a shortage. War over witnesses. The battle right now over whether John Bolton will testify at the president's trial as the White House seeks to block his book from being published. And overnight, Trump's legal team claims the president could legally solicit information from foreign governments about his political rivals to find the FBI and the Federal Election Commission. Breaking her silence, Kobe Bryant's wife Vanessa saying she's, quote, completely devastated about losing her husband and daughter in that helicopter crash. Her message for the other families of the victims. The mother of those two Idaho children missing since September now ordered to bring those siblings forward by the end of the day as their grandfather offers a $20,000 reward for help finding them. He joins us on GMA this morning. Book Club Backlash. Oprah's new pick, American Dirt Under Fire, outrage and threats on the author. The publisher now canceling the book tour for the number one bestseller. I can be a medicine, yeah. And Super Bowl secrets. Who may join J-Lo and Shakira on the halftime stage as we continue to count down to the big game just three days away. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. And good morning, America. We hope you all are well this Thursday morning, and we want to get right to the latest on that coronavirus. The World Health Organization is meeting this morning to decide whether to declare a global health emergency as cases of the coronavirus now surpass SARS. There are more than 7,700 confirmed cases worldwide. The death toll climbing to 170 in China, where Cases are now confirmed in every province in China and in 20 countries around the world. Yeah, and take a look. Thousands of passengers being held right now on this cruise ship in Italy because a woman from Hong Kong fell ill on board that cruise ship. That woman is now being quarantined as they now test for the coronavirus. And back here at home, those nearly 200 Americans who were evacuated from Wuhan are now under quarantine at that air base in Southern California. Will Carr is there again for us with the latest. Good morning, Will. And Robin, all of those Americans spent the night on the base behind me. They'll be cut off from the public for at least two more days. And it comes as there's still around 800 Americans in the hot zone in China, hoping to get back to the States as soon as possible. This morning, the novel coronavirus spreading to every province in China and 20 countries around the world. Residents in Hong Kong standing in long lines, scrambling to get the last remaining protective masks. In Italy, 6,000 passengers stranded on this Italian cruise ship after a couple came down with a fever, raising fears they contracted the virus. The couple from Hong Kong rushed to a hospital in Rome. For the first time, we're seeing inside the facility where 195 Americans are under voluntary quarantine after being evacuated from the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. They did a great job of really making us feel welcome here. Patrick Stockstill and his family say they paid $4,400 to fly on this charter from Wuhan, China, the hot zone, to Riverside County, California. I've never seen a plane set up like that before. It was a wide open cargo plane, but had passenger seats in it. It felt like something out of a movie. The family exhausted. We're hoping to get back home this weekend. Everyone on the plane is now providing blood samples and the CDC is rushing to test the results. We're here to ensure their safety and also to ensure the safety of those on the base, those in this community and elsewhere in America. So far, five people have contracted the new coronavirus in the United States. In China, at least 170 people have died, leading airlines like Delta, American and United to cancel some routes. The White House is also considering suspending all flights to China and just formed a task force to help respond. We've also just learned there will be at least one more charter flight from Wuhan to bring Americans back to the States. Amy. All right, Will Carr in California. Thank you. Let's bring in our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton. And Jen, as these numbers go up, yeah. the big question is, 
How do we put this all into context without panicking? Well, the, first of all, based on fe fact and not fear, but when you take a look at the numbers, Amy, we expect them to go up for several reasons. We're screening, we're able to diagnose, our awareness is up, and when you look for something, you will find it in medicine and science. But it's also important to realize something that we call a surveillance pyramid. So I want you to take a look at this. It's from the New England Journal of Medicine just out in the last few days. In general, the more mild a virus is, the harder it is to control because because people are less likely to seek medical attention at the top of that pyramid where you see higher fatality rates then it's generally easier to control a virus and according to this New England Journal paper what's really important it is possible for something to be a low threat to an individual but a high threat to the population all right and we're seeing a lot of those images from trying to people wearing those masks what are your thoughts on I want to be crystal clear n95s are for healthcare professionals only the surgical masks are not for well people, they're for sick people to protect others around them. And if you go out and make a rash purchase for big quantities of these stocks, you are not only endangering yourself because when you touch those masks, you're actually touching your face and increasing your risk, but you're putting healthcare workers at risk. If you go into a hospital and there are not enough masks for healthcare workers, we're in big trouble. All right, that's a very important warning to think yep. about. And it's not for people who are well. Absolutely not. All right. Can't emphasize that enough. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for emphasizing. Mm. We're going to move on to Washington now in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Today marks the final day senators can question the legal teams ahead of the key vote tomorrow on getting testimony from witnesses like John Bolton. The White House fighting to block that testimony and the publication of Bolton's new book in which he makes explosive claims that strike at the heart of Trump's defense. Our senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce checking all the latest on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, senators here have now asked over 90 questions in a pointed debate that stretched past 11 o'clock last night. And the president's team is now zeroing in on an eye-raising new defense. Even if the allegations are true, they say using military aid to get political favors is not impeachable. As senators grilled both sides late into the night, President Trump's legal team employing a new defense, claiming the president can solicit information from foreign governments about his political rivals. It's not campaign interference for credible information about wrongdoing to be brought to light, if it's credible information. But both the FBI director and the head of the Federal Election Commission have said campaigns should not accept foreign help. Democrats fired back. Now apparently it's okay for the president to get information from foreign governments in an election. That's news to me. Republicans are pushing for a speedy trial and say if Democrats call witnesses like former National Security Advisor John Bolton, they'll have their own wish list too. I want Adam Schiff. I want Hunter Biden. I want Joe Biden. I want, I want the whistleblower. If we get anybody we want, we'll be here for a very long time. Democrats say those witnesses aren't relevant to the case, but John Bolton is. A first-hand witness, Bolton reportedly writes in his upcoming book that Trump directly linked military aid to Ukraine to investigations into his rivals. On Twitter, the president attacking his own former advisor, saying Bolton begged for his job and calling his book nasty and untrue. The administration has sent Bolton's team a letter warning that his book cannot be published in its current form, claiming it contains top secret information. All eyes remain on those key undecided Republican senators who could vote to call witnesses. I send a question to the desk on behalf of myself, Senator Murkowski and Senator Romney. That question, what if Trump had multiple motives for pressuring Ukraine, some serving his personal interests, others serving the nation? Trump's lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, with a new explanation, saying the two are one and the same. And if a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Now today, senators have another eight hours of questioning before they finally get to that vote on witnesses tomorrow. But this morning, Republican leader Mitch McConnell believes he has enough votes to block additional witnesses. And top Republicans we've talked to are hopeful that they could move to acquit the president in the next two days. George. Okay, Mary, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from our senior national correspondent, Tamara Moran. And today, let's begin with those pretty breathtaking arguments from the president's legal team. First, that it's perfectly legal 
to get foreign help in an election. And then Alan Dershowitz going even farther and saying that almost anything a president does to get reelected is almost by definition not impeachable because he thinks it's in the national interest. Uh, breathtaking, expansive, radical. That's what the president's critics are saying. And president Trump's legal team, make no doubt about it, they are making some of the most expansive claims for the power and the privilege of president of the presidency in our history. Richard Nixon once said, when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. It was roundly criticized at the time, but that is essentially the defense that President Trump is making. And the impact of it will be to strengthen the president any president from now on over the Congress, over the criminal law, over a lot of American life. George. If indeed he is acquitted, it, it does appear though that it's a, quite a practical argument that's carrying the day with these senators on the fence about witnesses. This argument that basically the Senate would just be paralyzed if you kept calling in witnesses. Yeah, it was so interesting listening to the questions from senators yesterday. You'd think they'd focus on guilt or innocence or the standards of judgment. So much of it focused on process, how it would tie up the Senate, how difficult it would be to get witnesses into uh, the Senate and hold up the business of the Senate and the country for a long time, all process, and it raises the question, did the House fast track it too fast? Chair Moran, thanks very much. You're going to be joining us for our live coverage of the Senate impeachment trial. I'll be anchoring with our political and legal team starting at 1 Eastern right here on ABC. Robin? George, as we continue to think of the nine people who lost their lives in that tragic helicopter crash, we're starting to hear from their families, heartbroken, of course, over their loss, including Kobe Bryant's wife, Vanessa, who says her family is completely devastated. She says she understands what the other families are going through, sharing in their grief intimately. That's what she said. Tom Yamas is at the Staples Center in Los Angeles with more. Good morning, Tom. Robin, good morning to you. This is a major step forward for the Bryant family. Vanessa Bryant's message straight from the heart, a tribute to her husband and her late daughter, and now allowing the public to share in some of their happier memories. <laughs> oh my God. Good Overnight, girl. Vanessa Bryant reopening her Instagram account to the public giving fans access to several family moments. She had made her account private following the crash. On that Instagram page, Vanessa Bryant also making her first public statement since that deadly helicopter crash that took the lives of her husband, Kobe Bryant, their 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, and seven others, thanking fans for their support during what she calls a, quote, horrific time, and writing, we are completely devastated by the sudden loss of my adoring husband, Kobe the amazing father of our children, and my beautiful, sweet Gianna, a loving, thoughtful, and wonderful daughter and amazing sister. Adding, we're also devastated for the families who lost their loved ones on Sunday, and we share in their grief intimately. There aren't enough words to describe our pain right now. I take comfort in knowing that Kobe and Gigi both knew they were so deeply loved. Brian and his wife were married for nearly 20 years, together raising four daughters, Vanessa often spotted watching his games from courtside at the Staples Center and right by his side at sports functions. What's it like having him hanging around all the time? We love it. You do love yeah, it? Yeah, we actually do. We got used to him being around the last uh, three seasons because right. of his injuries. Right. Yeah, so, so it's great having him home. Vanessa also writing on Instagram, I'm not sure what our lives hold beyond today, and it's impossible to imagine life without them. But we wake up each day trying to keep pushing because Kobe and our baby girl Gigi are shining on us to light the way. Ending the post with three hashtags, girls dad, daddy's girls, and family. Also overnight, the coroner officially identifying all nine individuals, ruling their cause of death was blunt force trauma. There still isn't a definitive answer as to what caused Bryant's helicopter to crash. Foggy weather, just one part of the investigation. The NTSB reporting the chopper lost communication with ATC at 2,300 feet, causing a high-energy impact crash, all happening in about a minute. The weather could have caused spatial disorientation where the pilot didn't know whether he was up or down and could have inadvertently flown the helicopter into the ground. Perhaps there was a mechanical failure. Something could have broken where the pilot lost control. Every possibility is on the table. On Wednesday, Bryant's former team, the Los Angeles Lakers, returned to the court to practice. Players still too distraught to talk to the media. And across town, the Los Angeles Clippers opening up about Bryant. Players like Paul George, who grew up in the L.A. area, idolized him. We grew up 
here. We, we saw him every day on TV. Um, he's the reason all of us played the game. Uh, so it's, it's different. It hits different for us. And for the first time overnight, the Los Angeles Lakers also putting out a statement. We want to put it on the screen now for you. It reads in part, words cannot express what Kobe means to the Los Angeles Lakers, our fans, and our city. More than a basketball player, he was a beloved father, husband, and teammate. Their love and light will remain in our hearts forever. And George, we can't say it enough. Every time we come back here to the Staples Center, these memorials grow and grow. And now all over the city of L.A., there are murals going up in honor of Kobe Bryant. Touched George. so many lives. Okay, Tom, thanks very much. We're going to turn now to the backlash over a pick from Oprah's book club. Some critics are calling out the novel American Dirt for how it portrays immigrants, even questioning the author's right to address this subject. And now the publisher is canceling the author's book tour, citing safety concerns. Gio Benitez has the story. Hello? It's the highly anticipated novel that got publishing's most sought after seal of approval Oprah's book club. This book, American Dirt, just gutted me. And I didn't just read this book, I inhabited this book. The novel, American Dirt, is about a mother who flees Mexico with her son, pursued by the head of a drug cartel. But it was quickly criticized by many Mexican-American writers who accused author Janine Cummins of writing an exploitative, oversimplified, and ill-informed novel, too often erring on the side of trauma fetishization. The publisher canceling the tour, saying, based on specific threats to booksellers and the author, we believe there exists real peril to their safety. Cummins has previously addressed questions about whether she's the right person to tell this story. I resisted for a very long time telling the story from a migrant's point of view because I was worried that I, that I didn't know enough, that my privilege would make me blind to certain truths. Cummins says her father is Puerto Rican, that she identifies as Latina, and that she spent five years working on the book, at times on the U.S.-Mexico border. But many say that's not enough. One person tweeting, I'm exhausted about our stories being told by white and non-immigrant writers or reporters. Most of them get it wrong and further dehumanize us and our experience. But not everyone is upset. Celebrated Mexican-American author Sandra Cisneros defended the book on NPR. It just took me on the journey. It was very believable. And I know from talking to people who have crossed the border or who have been detained or who are in the shelters, I knew this story. I wanted to support it. I do support it. And I do stand by it. Oprah now saying she wants to have a deeper discussion. I've spent the past few days listening to members of the Latinx community to get a greater understanding of their concerns. And I hear them. I do. And the publisher also plans to hold town hall meetings with the author and her critics. Now, I have spoken to so many on all sides of this issue, and one thing is clear, this is complicated, especially because there's not just one Latino experience, there's not just one immigrant experience, and so the publishing industry right now is asking who should be writing these novels. Well, I, I, I get the idea of criticizing what's in the book. That's, it's, that's fair game whenever a writer puts that down. I don't quite understand questioning a writer's right to write something. That's basically the idea of all fiction, getting and, inside someone else's head. And that's the debate right now. Yeah, yeah. sure is. Thank you, well, thank you, Gio. We are following a lot of other stories this morning, including the latest on those two Idaho siblings missing since September. Today's the deadline for their mother to bring them forward, and now their grandfather's joining us on GMA. And as anticipation grows for the Super Bowl, who could join Jennifer Lopez and Shakira on stage for the halftime show? But first, let's go to Ginger. And let's get to the Cold Cities, brought to you by Cosequin. Hi, I'm CJ, and this is my family. I'm Toby, and this is my family. Four years ago, I won Westminster. Four years ago, I won their hearts. I've been taking Cosequin since I was a pup. I was on Cosequin the minute they rescued me. It helps me run around that ring like a champ. It helps me run around the yard like a champ. Champions trust Cosequin, the number one vet-recommended retail brand and official joint health supplement of the Westminster Dog Show. Well, another dry and chilly day today with more clouds increasing out the door this morning, though temperatures are below freezing by lunchtime, mostly cloudy 39 and our high temperature around three o'clock, 42 degrees. So cloudy and gray this afternoon. We've been on the road all morning long at the convention center for the Washington Auto Show. It's going on through the weekend. So tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 46, cloudy on Saturday, 47 and sunshine Sunday, a little milder highs in the low 50s.
A lot more coming up this Thursday. We'll be right back. I have a surprise. Take my hand and cover your eyes. I want to make 